Uh, my background is in astrophysics, and for several years I got to work on the Hubble Space Telescope, and we got to take beautiful images of the universe like this. This is the Orion Nebula, seen very popularly in the wintertime, and with Hubble we can take exquisitely high resolution uh, images of regions of the universe like this. This is a place where stars are born. Because of Hubble's capabilities, we can study these images in such detail, we can actually build up 3D models and do something we could never dream to do within anyone's lifetime, which is to fly around the Orion Nebula. We can reveal Orion for what it is, a city of newly formed stars. Some 1,000 new stars are born here and they're sculpted by the great force that surrounds us and penetrates us and literally binds the galaxy together. I am speaking, of course, of gravity. <laughs> stars are composed primarily of hydrogen and helium. They can, they combine together through gravity, forming a swirling disk that you see here. The pressures and the temperatures at the center of this newly forming star grow hotter and hotter and hotter until finally, at some point, they become like some a protostar. They're not yet fully fledged stars, but here in the Orion Nebula, we can spot about some 300 examples of these stars and their solar systems under construction. But dominating the center of this nebula are four very large, very bright stars known as the trapezium. These stars are much, much hotter, much brighter than our sun. They shine with the light of a mountain of light and energy. Is, it is expanded and shot out upon these newly forming star systems. So much so that their outer shells, their outer cocoons, are being ablated. They're actually being eroded by these newly forming stars, or by these recently formed stars in the distance. But surrounding these protostars are these circumstellar disks. We call them protoplanetary disks, or proplets for short. These disks fall upon the star and actually eject. This is not an animation. These are real images made by the Hubble telescope of a newly forming star where you can see these bullets, each bullet about the size of our entire solar system being ejected into space. Eventually, the temperatures and the pressures get so hot that the star begins to undergo thermonuclear fusion. Hydrogen fuses into helium, releasing gamma rays in the process, which are then absorbed and reabsorbed inside the star over a period of about a thousand years until the first light emerges from the newly formed sun. The sun begins its 10 billion year lifetime on what is known as the main sequence. This is hydrogen burning. And that radiation and energy is anything but just dull and ordinary. These prominences, these coronal mass ejections, like you see here from our own sun, which are about two to four times the size of Jupiter, are ejected into space at speeds of about two million miles an hour. But eventually, that hydrogen runs out and the core shuts down. And the core shuts down, it begins to fuse into helium. This causes the outer layers of the star to expand. And gradually over time, our own sun will begin to undergo an expansion in about 4 billion years hence. The outer layers will become cooler and redder, and the sun will grow, consuming Mercury, Venus, and indeed very possibly the Earth. Stars like our sun undergo this process over a course of about 10 to 50 million years. We don't fully understand the physics of exactly what happens here, but essentially, the outer winds and the outer atmospheres of what used to be the sun are blown out into space in a series of ever-increasing winds. These winds cast out the uh, outer nebula, uh, the, the outer atmosphere, into a nebula like this. This is known as the Helix Nebula. This is also the Hubble Space Telescope, and you can see some extraordinary complexity. In fact, if we look carefully at the details of this nebula, we can wrap that into a computer, build up a 3D model of the interior of this nebula. And what looks at first like a donut is actually not quite a donut at all. It's in fact something very extraordinary and involved indeed. What we have is the outer shell kind of expanded initially in more or less a toroidal or a donut shape outflow, but then a vast wind blew out in all directions, sweeping out and clearing everything out from what used to be the outer atmosphere of what was once a mighty sun. Eventually, the outer nebula of the star begins, continues to blow away, and this is a very sped up evolution of what will happen to our own sun. Again, about 4 billion years now, it will last, again, about maybe 10 to 50 million years in the process, leaving behind a hot, dense cinder of solid helium about the size of the Earth. This is known as a white dwarf. But for stars that are maybe 10 to 20 times the mass of the Sun, their demises are much more violent. These are supernovae explosions. 
Supernovae are the most powerful explosions since the very beginning of the time and creation of the from the Big Bang. When a supernova blows up, it can outshine all 400 billion stars in the galaxy in which it lives combined. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is the Crab Nebula. This is the remnant of a supernova that was witnessed by the Chinese in the year 1054 AD. And strangely enough, Western astronomers didn't report this event. But when we examine the Crab Nebula with the Chandra X-ray Observatory, we can see an object compacted at the center that is literally millions of times denser than a white dwarf that will become our sun, that our sun will become one day. This is a neutron star, a solid, degenerate ball of neutrons, no larger than the size of Manhattan Island. There's a disk of material, just like we saw when the star is forming, there's a disk of material as the star is dying and it is falling on to this pulsar, and some of it is being accelerated in a bipolar outflow, much like we saw when the star was forming, about, in this case, of a massive star just a, million, a few million years ago. Supernova explosions are so powerful that elements heavier than iron are fused to become things like Silver, nickel, gold, and the very gold that we wear on our wedding bands or cherish so much on Earth are only fused during the first 15 seconds of a supernova explosion. This sends out a tremendous shock wave that accelerates into interstellar space until finally one day it encounters a cloud of hydrogen gas and dust and causes that hydrogen to clump up and gravity once again takes over, sculpting and drawing in material until eventually new stars begin to form. And around one of those stars, just maybe, there's a disk of that leftover material that continues to form, and little eddies form within that disk, creating planets, and then perhaps one day, on one of those planets, life begins to evolve, and maybe life evolves to the point where it becomes intelligent enough to contemplate the universe that created it. Thank you very much.